Hello and welcome to Applied Statistics using SPSS and in this video I will show you how to do one-way repeated measures and over procedure in SPSS. And the data set I've got in front of me is a fictitious data set that contains the diastolic blood pressure measurements for 10 different patients over four different time periods. And each of these patients follows the same exercise and diet regime. And we can see that this is a repeated measures design because the same patients have been measured over the four different time periods. In terms of the assumptions, well, first of all, the dependent variable must be continuous, which it is. But also we must have sphericity and the normality of the residuals, which is something that I will check shortly. So in SPSS, we select Analyze, then General Linear Model and Repeat Measures. I will rename factor as time, and we've got four different time levels. So we can see we've got before, after one month, after three months, and after six months. So I'll add this and then select Define. So next we move across the four different time levels, so before, after one month, after three months, and after six months. I then select Save. And I will select the standardized residuals. So when we select this, a set of standardized residuals will be created for each time point, then added to the data set, and then we can check these residuals for normality. So next we select continue and OK. So here is the output. Um, first of all, if we look at um, Morkley's test of sphericity, we can see that this is not significant, so we've not violated the assumption of sphericity. If you recall, sphericity is the equality of the variances of the differences between the time levels. If we don't know anything about sphericity or if sphericity is violated and the greenhouse Geiser estimate is less than 0 0.75, then we would use the greenhouse Geiser correction. If the greenhouse Geiser estimate is, is not less than 0 0.75, then the general consensus is that we use the, the wind felt um, correction in this table here. Okay, so moving down to the, the table of the, the main result, we have not violated sphericity, so we can use the sphericity assumed row in this, and we can see that we've got a significant result. So basically this is telling us that there's a difference in blood pressure between at least two different time points, but we don't know exactly where. So what we would need to do is um, some post hoc tests to, to find out more about this. But before we do the post hoc tests, I just want to check the normality of the residuals. So, so here are the residuals that are being created. So we can do this by the usual way of selecting Analyze, uh, Descriptive uh, Statistics, and then Explore. So let's move across the standardized residuals to the dependent list box. And if we select plots, then we'll select normality plots with tests and continue and OK. OK, so if we scroll down to the results, here we go. If we, if we look at the Shapiro-Wilk result, we can see that um, none of these is significant, so we've not violated normality of the residuals. If you'd like to see more about test and normality, please see my, my video on, on test and normality. Okay, so that was the, um, the final assumption um, checked. So now if we go back and do some post hoc testing to try and find out where these differences lie. So if we select Analyze, and again, general linear model and repeat measures. Then select define. Like 
in fact, the, the postdoc testing is not under the, the postdoc option, so we need to select options. And we need to move across time to the display means full box. And then if we select compare main effects, the in terms of choosing the, the test, the, the general consensus is that if you're absolutely certain about sphericity, then we can use um, the LSD method, so that's two keys. Um, otherwise, use Bonferroni. So to be safe, I'll use Bonferroni in this case. And then select continue and OK. OK, and if we scroll down to the results, so here we go. If we look at this table, we can see that all the differences are significant apart from between time levels three and four. And again, here the other way around. So basically what this is telling us is that, in particular, if we look at the, the means here, that blood pressure decreases significantly after one month and again after three months, but it does not decrease significantly after six months. Okay, well I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please let me know.